Hey, what is up guys? So today we are going to be talking about how to side deck against the new E-Heroes because this deck is a very, very popular deck and I've heard of you guys DMing me on over on Twitter and you guys messaging in the comments on when I was streaming, how the heck do you beat the new E-Heroes? Because like half the duels that I've been seeing on Duel Network and on DevPro, one of the players is playing uh, Heroes and the deck is basically super popular because not only is it a cheap deck but when you compare it to the other top three it's significantly less expensive and pretty much anyone that wants to be competitive uh, that can't afford stuff is probably going to be looking at heroes because the deck is already doing quite well not only in the ocg but it's doing quite well in the tcg as well but anyways uh there are first off a lot of different builds of heroes but majority of them will be bringing out first turn dark law so let's go ahead and tackle dealing with the first turn dark law now if you guys haven't been playing against necros you'll know that smashing ground you know dark holes and regeki are pretty much needed to actually deal with it because if you're playing a deck that relies specifically on special summons which is basically all the meta uh you really need these as quickly as possible otherwise if you can't make any plays some decks just completely drop back row because of denko seka there are several uh builds of the burning abyss where they just don't have any uh traps because you know they just don't like getting denko seka into you know should all fusion to you automatically lose but uh, you have to be able to deal with the deck relatively fast. And the reason why I just don't like traps uh, against that deck is because they can mask hero acid and they can pop everything. But, uh, you know, maybe in the off chance you have Gores, because Gores is at two in the TCG, keep that in mind as well. Uh, you can prevent yourself from losing because, like I said, the deck is kind of an all-in deck. You're going to be paying a bunch of life points and everything is pretty much uh, set on board, especially if they're going to be trying to special in Bubble Man by having no cards. They're going to have to set everything. And especially if there are all uh, quick plays that they're setting they can't activate them in the same turn so i like to have the smashing ground the dark holes and like the regekis i think that these are pretty much more relevant right now in the main deck smashing ground is more of a side deck card but if you guys have been watching what the ocg has been doing because of the jijin locking you out from special summoning you need smashing ground uh, especially if your deck can't function without special summons uh, a deck that I could think of off the top of my head that literally can't really make any plays uh, is going to be something like Burning Abyss, especially if you're playing no traps to protect yourself with. You're just going to have a really bad time if you can't special summon. But uh, nonetheless, uh, this video is mostly about the heroes, but you know, I kind of want to tie them together because uh, heroes and Narcos will be a very popular deck, and so Dark Hole and Regeki in the main deck probably will see a lot more play, uh, but also Smashing Ground. There are several builds of uh, decks in the OCG that just run triple smashing because they don't like dealing with it. Because if you've played Cleese and you match up against a first turn Dark Law, it really sucks because anything you're gonna do, you're gonna go minus one anyway. So it's a very hard battle. And even in the mirror match for heroes, it is very difficult sometimes to deal with Dark Law when you have E-Calls, you have reinforcements of the army, and you have, you know, of course your play uh, that you wanna make, but they already went for theirs and you're just gonna go minus. And of course, if they hit the right random card out of your hand, you're gonna be at significant disadvantage. So just like basically, single destruction uh is definitely good uh if you can one for one them it's i mean they get the card out for free i understand that but the thing is uh, you're getting rid of a dark law and most decks will play two to three there's not very many that will play one so just keep in mind that even if you get rid of one of them uh it's probably going to come out next turn unless you get out something that's stronger than it and it can't deal with it uh anki is not out yet let me go ahead and show you guys this card um another thing that i wanted to mention really quickly is majority of the time you're if your opponent really understands how the deck plays, they're not going to go for a uh, first turn on their turn Dark Law. What they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and get that free uh, mass change with the effect of Shadow Mist, and then on your turn, they're going to go ahead and try to set it to the graveyard, which of course you can use a lot of different other things to uh, kind of uh stun them i guess you could say like lance is a fantastic card uh, against the deck if you know you're going in and then they're going to try to make a dark law obviously that's more efficient for them that way they get the uh both of the effects is the shadow mist because you can only get one of them per turn of course and they're going to try to get the most out of their card usually so uh lance can also be good to deal with it if you know they happen to have shadow mist and they haven't made it yet but anki is another like great card it's just more attack 28 because sometimes this card can be kind of weak just you know against certain uh matchups but um, I also really like Chalice because uh, you can Chalice this card and then because you still have a fusion, if you're playing Shadals, highly recommend uh, Chalice because you're going to negate its effect and then you can just go into Construct and not care about, uh, you know, the attack because you're going to go ahead and destroy it by your card effect. But uh, yeah, I like Chalice if you're playing Shadals uh, because it, it does a lot of stuff against a lot of different decks, but specifically because if you activate something Smashing Ground, your Shadal Fusion isn't going to be, you know, 
as great as it could have been. So I like Chalice versus that. Uh, Book of Moon could be used in like, you know, every deck, but I think Shadals can benefit the most off of Chalice uh, than other decks that I can think of at the moment. Um, like I mentioned before, if they're gonna wait for their card, uh, like they wanna get the most out of it, you can also Lance them. Lancing them can definitely hurt, and Lance is just overall pretty versatile card. Uh, next up, Monarch Storm Fourth. Uh, people sometimes main deck this in certain decks, and they also uh, side deck this in like Vandy's Ampinus or Majesty's Fiend. If you summon this against heroes, a lot of the hero builds, if you guys have seen them from the OTG, they run very, very little traps. It's almost no traps, uh, or they just run like you know, the standard, uh, you know, like the Solemn, maybe like the, the Compulse, the Torrential, uh, anything that's just like really strong and like, you know, Bottomless uh, is also a really great card. But uh, they don't have too many traps, so if you get this card out and it's successful, uh, sometimes you can just beat them down with this and they literally can't do anything because all of their cards are just mass changes and uh, they need a special summon to do anything. Another card I really liked, and this card was getting some play back when Six Samurais were popular. I don't know if you guys remember this card. I like this card a lot though. Uh, anyway, so it's during damage calculation, this card battles a warrior type monster. This card gains 2000 attack and defense during damage calculation only. One thing I want to mention with this card is it's fantastic to set it, because it, it gains 2000 defense as well. So that's 3,800 defense, and I don't think you can come up with anything that's better than that. And I don't think any hero player is going to be like, oh, let me go ahead and randomly make another card. Because usually when they see a face down, they're like, oh, I could probably play aggressive. So if they're going to go for an exceed play, uh, because pretty much everything is warrior in the deck, so this card basically can battle anything because it becomes 3,350, which pretty much kills everything unless Shining happens to have a lot of banished stuff. Let me show you Shining real quick because... Again, sometimes people are new to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And they don't know some of these older cards. But anyways, with Shining, uh, it gains 300 attack for each of your banished element of your monsters. So, you know, unless they have Shining, there's pretty much nothing that's going to be able to just, you know, attack over it. And uh, if they notice you have one face down, you have, like, no back row, uh, they're going to try to go for OTK. Like, if you go ahead and, like, you got Kinetic Soldier, I recommend you not to set any back row. Force them to basically try to go all in, meaning that they're going to set everything and then special bulb man. And majority of the time, they will be making this card over here, Blade Armor Ninja. Uh, and this will try to uh, push uh, Armor Ninja. This is the card that's going to try to push for game, but it's only got 2200 attack. It can attack twice, but again, you're going to have a monster with 3800 defense and there's pretty much nothing uh, gonna that's going to really deal with it. And if you're playing online, Anki is a card. Uh, you, this card has to uh, destroy an opponent's monster battle and send it to the graveyard and there's also uh dm which is also another popular aggressive uh was masked hero dm uh oh they changed it D okay well whatever anyways uh this card has the effect where it just shows a put sponsor by balance into the graveyard they, they can special summon a level four lower hero which is usually shadow mess again if you only set one monster they're like okay this guy has no plays because i'm just gonna go ahead and run over i'm gonna I have dark law out and then they're just going to take a decent amount of damage depending on what, of course, attacks. Sometimes they'll attack with Shadow Mist because they're like, okay, if I can attack with Shadow Mist, then Mass Change, I'll get significant amount of damage. And, and Shadow Mist only has a thousand attacks, so they'll be taking a significant amount of damage from that. 2,800 damage just for running into Kinetic Soldier. And then uh, main phase two, if they exceed into something, yeah, uh, then you know maybe Kinetic Soldier will die from something like a Black Shep of Corn or uh, something else. But uh, if this card survives the next turn, you're gonna be able to uh, not only perhaps deal some damage to them, and remember, Hero Lives is half of their life points, so they're gonna be at uh, 4,000 or less life points. Of course, if you activate it upstart, they'll be at more. But uh, you can just, you know, connect Soldier, maybe attack into something, and then from there you can get, go off from there. Because again, remember that if you're gonna set this card and they have a hand that they can OTK with, more than likely they're gonna try to do it because, uh, I mean, even though Miracle Fusion is a great top deck card, because they have so low life points, they need to play as aggressive as possible and basically try to flood with everything that they can and try to stop you from doing anything through Dark Law and then uh, if they have any back row. Some will play Vanny's Emptiness because Vanny's Emptiness and a Dark Law can be pretty much game over for most decks. But if you happen to have a Smashing Ground, it's just so good. Not only be able able to get rid of Dark Law, but then you get rid of Vanny's Amphius and another card, it's just, uh, or if you have uh, MST also, uh, that's, yeah, I can get rid of this, um, but yeah, if you can smash and ground, you can get rid of the Dark Law, and then Vanny's Amphius goes away uh, from that, but um, also, uh, Fossil Dyna is also a pretty good card, kind of the same mentality that I have with uh, the Kinetic Soldier, although this card 
is more, I would say, passive. Uh, this card can be aggressive. You can normal summon this and attack over pretty much everything, like, like I said, like Dark Law. And again, like I said, they have a bunch of cards that pretty much just max change and they get like free pluses anyways. So this card can attack over most of the stuff anyways. Even if they have another mass change, it's not going to really do them any good to go into like an Anki or, you know, if they have the uh, form change or whatever, uh, going into other things. Now, I do want to mention that there is a card that can get over Connect Soldier real quick. It's the uh, Koga. The mass hero Koga over here, where you get to uh, banish a hero monster and then uh, target one face of monster and it loses attack equal to the monster that you banished. But uh, that card doesn't come out like too often first turn. And obviously if Koga's on the field, you're gonna notice that and you're gonna be like, okay. And if they have to be forced to make a Koga, this card doesn't really stun you in any way. Uh, you can just do whatever you want because you still have a graveyard and you can still go plus. Um, next up, I wanna talk about Cthulian Palmer. It's an okay card. It's more of a card that you have to like have before. Like, so if you're going first, I could see maybe side decking this card. Uh, but same thing with like the Miss Palmerization. But uh, basically, you get to tribute one monster and you get to take control. I've noticed if you take control over their Dark Law, like even in mirror match, uh, making Dark Law first turn is just so so good because you know Rotas and like they're gonna like lose their graveyard. It just becomes a problem for them. So uh, being able to take their Dark Law is also very good. Now, also, Miss Palmerization could be amazing if. They've already got an established board, and maybe you set one, they're like, okay, he's got one, I'm just gonna go ahead and acid, blow it up, and then go for, you know, OTK. Miss Palmerization can be very, very useful. It can be a multiple compulse for them. So let me go ahead and read this card real quick. It says, activate only when a fusion monster is special summoned. Return all face-up fusion monsters to their respective fusion deck. So that basically compulses everything, which is amazing. Uh, now, one thing I want to mention real quick with non-fusion area, um, unless they change this card, it says neither player can fusion summon. One thing that I want to mention is that Mask Change is considered a special summon, not a fusion summon. Now, non-fusion area can stop things like Miracle Fusion, because that is a fusion summon, whereas this card, if you read it, it just says special summon. So uh, this card will not be too good against the deck, but it can stop some things like the uh, Miracle Fusion, like I mentioned. Or if you're playing for whatever reason against a guy that's still running like Polymerization or something, or if there's some new like build that runs that or something, uh, yeah, that, this could be good. But overall, I think this card's much better. It bounces back multiple cards, uh, as long as you know, but you can only activate it when it's special summons, so sometimes it's like too slow, you know. Compulse can just be overall better. Next up, uh, Fire Hand, Ice Hand. I like both of these because. Uh, remember, uh, going back to the same topic of them going all in, if you, if you just set one thing, they're going to be more tempted to go all in if you just set no back row. And then, of course, uh, if they're going to special some bow men, they have to set everything that they have. They can't activate the uh, quick place, like I mentioned before, like the uh, mass changes, because they just set it that turn. So you're going to be able to pop all the stuff, and then you can you know survive, and sometimes you can just win from there. Obviously, there is a problem if Dark Law is on board, though, just as a heads up. So uh, this might not be the best card, but uh, if you can deal with Dark Law, you know maybe you can break through skill it, then you're ready to go. Uh, Mirror Force, again, another great card against the deck because if you only have one back row, sometimes they'll be tempted to go all in, and Mirror Force is just a card where, you know, some people just, they forget about the card because it's not really seeing any play, but uh, like I said, uh, the deck is more prone to going all in as quickly as possible, regardless of what the field looks like, because sometimes it, if they if they play Warning too, that's, uh, you know, 4,000, then another 2,000, that's going to leave them at 2,000, and maybe they play like, uh, Instant Fusion, which is very popular, and then at that point they're at a thousand. They, they gotta go for games as quickly as possible. They can't lose to like a Black Shuffle Corn or something, so uh, they're gonna be prone to, like I said, Golan. But other cards I kind of wanted to talk about, um, Skill Drain can be good against the deck because they really need to get their free pluses, but the thing is, it's only gonna be good if uh, you get to go first. Otherwise, sometimes dealing with a Dark Law, it's just, it's not too favorable, especially if you draw other cards that you can't really use because uh, you just have too much back row that just, you know, multiple skill drains. And if you have MST and like, they just don't care because they're just going to hold out everything and just OTK you. It can be bad. Bandy's Emptiness can also be a fantastic card because a lot of them, uh, I've seen a few builds that don't play MST, even in the OCG. Uh, I don't advise that. I think MST is pretty much a required card. But if you can flip up a Vandy, sometimes, uh, like I mentioned, the OCG, they don't play it because they just try to go for uh, the Acid, which actually can just pop everything. Uh, so yeah, just keep in mind about that. Also, you can run Starlight Road. It's not a bad option, if you guys don't know what this does. Uh, it's, it's an effect that would destroy two or more cards you control, and you get, you get the effect of some stars, which deals with Dark Law. So I really like that for that aspect. Mind Crush is also a great side deck card. Um, but it's like it goes back to the same idea of like you need to like have it first because if they go for the dark law like it's not going to be too good to be like okay mind crash later it's just more optimal to uh, have the side in when you're going first 
and you open up with it. Uh, next up, uh, like I mentioned, non-fusion area. It can stop some things like Miracle or Poly, but it will not stop the mass change, so I don't advise this card. But if you guys felt like I missed out on anything, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, the tips to play against the deck is play as aggressive as possible because you can't play passively against this deck. You can't just set one card and then be like, okay, I'll, I'll survive next turn. I, I can try to do something because they're just going to go all in because they're at really low life. And when they're at low life, they're kind of pressured to play more aggressive. And you can capitalize off that through things like Kinetic Soldier and uh, Fossil Dyna. If I had to pick one card that uh, you guys should try to side deck against it. Um, I could highly recommend you guys, I would go for these first because it does also hurt Necros, whereas these cards against Necros, they won't do so well. And that's just gonna be a more well-rounded side deck uh, because these are kind of conditional uh, to certain things. Like this basically only against the early. I guess you could do it if you don't like six Samurais because this can wreck six Samurais, but like I said, um, majority of the time they won't go for an Exceed that's not a warrior. Um, and they're going to be going for like Blade Armor Ninja most of the time when they try to go for an Exceed and they're going to try to push for again. But anyways, like I said, if you felt like I missed out on any like tips or play styles, let me know in the comment section below. But thanks for watching and good hunting those heroes because uh, yeah, that deck is very, very popular and hope this will help you guys uh, have a little bit of a better matchup against them. But thanks for watching guys. Asian Eyes out.